the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, who is that? Follow me. And I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Amen. Now, Amen. when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Yes, yes. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Yes, For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I want to hear more. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. 
And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Yes. Therefore, if you are offering a gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. And truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Thank you, Jesus. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said. Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Yes, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your he's own right, he's right. what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Yes, we are perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Hey, but I'm excited. I got a new project I want to try out it for encouragement, for growth, and edification for all of us. Those who profess themselves to be Christians is to let's read the entire Bible. One chapter at a time for New Testament, one chapter at a time for the Old Testament. Use the New Testament in the morning and at uh, nighttime, use the Old Testament and incorporate that as part of your prayer, meaning it just becomes a routine thing with your prayer life. So, what I'm going to do is by being an example, let's actually go ahead and do that as well. Use it on YouTube. I recommend you do um, subscribe so you can be notified when the chapter that you need to read comes up and you can go and keep up with it. Subscribe to the channel. You go to the channel and catch up with the ones that you may have missed. But let's let's get it one day at a time. You know, and what I like to do is I'm excited because I think it's lovely because we really do need to read the Bible for ourselves. Everybody that and I encourage many of you to do that. The reason I'm doing this is because like I say it's the title How to Read the Entire Bible, read it one day at a time with your morning and prayer and use an audio book to help you read and pronounce some of those words. Especially when you get to the Old Testament, I'm telling you something else. But also look at this right here. I put down 
the survey that was done. It was called how much, it was called Life Wave Research did it. How much of the Bible have you personally read? And you can see 10% none, 13% only a few sentences, 30% several passages or stories, 50% at least half of it, 12% almost all of it, 11% uh, all of it, and 9% all of it more than once. And the reason I don't want you just to read the Bible, I want you to get it, meditate on it, and get that in your heart and your spirit and get revelation that God gives you. So that's why the intent is for you to read these scriptures because you guarantee you, you will grow in the things of God. And then you'll have to depend on other people to tell you something. And then when you go to church, sir, when the man said, Let's turn to such and such chapter. You can sit and say, I did that. <laughs> I read that chapter. And, and then you can get some more comments on that. So you start to understand what the man is trying to teach. But you keep it in content of those scriptures that they come in. Amen. Hey, I, I think you'll love it. I think I know you'll love it. I know you enjoy it because we got to change that stat that we just read. All right. So get ready. Go to the chapter that's up for the day. And don't forget to subscribe, and I guarantee you, we've been able to knock out the New Testament, uh, I think in about seven months. Listen, it's worth it so you can get to know your Bible and know who you are. Because what the scripture says who you are is more important than what people say that you are. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you and see you. Bye-bye. Look at this right here. This is the Lord's Prayer. This is what Christ taught his disciples, which means that this is something that was for all believers to use. It's just a matter, you don't have to use this verbatim, but it's just something you want to do. You see in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, after this matter, therefore pray thee, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, which is this word, it's what we're reading, will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day, meaning a daily prayer. That's why I encourage you to read the Bible daily as well as pray daily. Uh, our daily bread, and the daily bread, once again, is the Word of God. I mean, you talk about local bread, we're talking about the Word of God. And forgive us our debts, we give our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. For if you give men their trespasses, you have Father also forgive you. This is a reminder of Christ is telling you. It's important for you to forgive others, for your Father in heaven will forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your Father give them trespasses. So you want to remind yourself daily to forgive those who have offended you. Amen? And just remember 1 Timothy 2, 4, who would have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. Once again, the knowledge of the truth is the word of God. You don't want to, it, it is no other truth given if you don't have the word of God with you. That's why you will read it daily. That's why I encourage you to do this, to read the entire Bible over and over again. Romans 14, 12 says, and so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And God is going to to hold you accountable for understanding his word. He's not going to sit there and say, well, your pastor didn't tell you I got it. No. He's going to sit there and say, I told you to study. I told you to read the word of God. Amen? So that's what we do that. So, but the main thing is we can do this. We can read the Bible, the entire Bible, especially the entire New Testament, uh, one day at a time, one chapter at a time. And I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, you I do recommend pray daily too, just like Christ taught us to pray. Pray daily and pray His will, pray His word. That's what. And therefore, when you ask for things, you should remind Him of His word. Amen. And he wants you to love one another. God bless. I'll see you later. And don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, every time we branch out, you'll be notified. Then you go ahead and read that. Do that reading for yourself. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.